So I guess this could simply be chalked up as another own goal of the left, another example of the left eating itself. But I think it's also a sign of how strong confirmation bias is, how desperately people latch onto statements that confirm what they already believe. Now everyone is guilty of this to some extent, but this is a particularly egregious example. Now the whole problem seems to have started with this dishonest asshole, Sasha Sane, who cut 47 seconds of Pinker speaking on a panel at Harvard as part of the spiked online unsafe space tour of US college campuses. Now the entire segment of Pinker speaking speaking is about 13 minutes long, and I'm going to play a little less than nine minutes of it. But just in case I get accused of a lack of context, please go and watch the full 13 minutes. It starts at 32 minutes, 28 seconds into the panel discussion. But before I do play this excerpt, just consider some of the reactions. Here's PZ Myers, a serial misrepresenter. If you ever doubted that Steven Pinker's sympathies lie with the alt-right, just watch this clip. Here's a tweet from Slate's chief political correspondent. True statements like blacks cause crime and Jews control the world. And here's a tweet from a professor of sociology at Hunter College. If one were, say, writing a book about the mainstreaming of white nationalism, one would certainly consider featuring this as supporting evidence for one's main point. So just keep those statements in mind when watching the following clip. For all of the silliness on campus, um, the old saying that uh, academic debates are fierce because so little is at stake, um, that, uh, when it comes to politics, a great deal is at stake. And so uh, ultimately, we should be far more concerned with the absurdity of Donald Trump than we are of campus follies. But nonetheless, in the eyes of people who are trying to decide which tribe they want to affiliate with, uh, I think the politically correct left has uh, made it a toss-up. You'd think that it would be impossible to out-stupid uh, Donald Trump, but a lot of the politically correct left has been, uh, been doing their best. It should have been a, a slam dunk. They made it into a toss-up. The other um, way in which I, I, I do agree with my fellow panelists that, uh, that political correctness has done uh, uh, an enormous amount of harm in, in the sliver of the population that might be I don't, wouldn't want to say persuadable, but certainly uh, whose affiliation might be up for grabs, comes from the um, uh, often highly um, literate, highly intelligent people who uh, gravitate to the alt-right, uh, internet savvy, uh, media savvy, who um, often are um, radicalized in that way, who, who swallow the red pill, as the saying goes, the illusion from, from, from the matrix, when they are exposed to the first time to true statements that have never been voiced in college campuses or in the New York Times or in respectable media, uh, that are almost like a bacillus to which they have no uh, immunity. And they are immediately infected with both a feeling of outrage that these truths uh, are unsayable uh, and no defense against uh, uh, taking them to what we might consider to be rather repellent conclusions. Let me give you some examples. Um, so here is a, um, a fact that's going to sound ragingly controversial, but is not. And that is that um, capitalist societies are better than communist ones. Okay? So if you, if you doubt it, then just uh, ask yourself the question, would I rather live in South Korea or North Korea? Uh, would I rather live in West Germany in the 1970s or East Germany or in the 1960s? So th this is not, uh, I, I submit that this is actually not a controversial statement, but in university campuses, it is considered, will be considered flamingly radical. Number two, uh, here's another one. Men and women are, uh, are, are not identical in their life priorities, in their sexuality, uh, in, their, uh, in their tastes and interests. Again, this is not controversial to anyone who is even glanced at the data. The kind of vocational interest tests of the kind that your high school guidance counselor gave you have been given to millions of people. And men and women give different answers as to what they want to do for a living and how much time they want to allocate to family versus uh, career and so on. But you kind of you can't say it. I mean, someone, very famous person on this campus did say it. And uh, we all know what happened to him. And he's no longer, well, he is on this campus, but no longer in the same office. Uh, here's a, uh, a, a third fact that is just not 
controversial, although it sounds controversial, and that is that different ethnic groups commit uh, violent crimes at different rates. You can go to the Bureau of Justice Statistics, look it up on their website. The uh, homicide rate among African Americans is about seven or eight times higher than it is among European Americans. And uh, terrorism, go to the Global Terrorist Database and you find that uh, worldwide the overwhelming majority of suicide terrorist acts are, are committed by Islamist uh, extremist groups. Now, if you've never heard these facts before uh, and you stumble across them or someone mentions them, it is possible to, uh, uh, to, to come to some extreme conclusions, such as that, uh, that women are inferior, that African Americans are naturally violent, that we all ought to be anarcho-capitalists and, uh, and uh, do away with all regulation and social safety nets, um, that, uh, that most terrorism in this country is the fault of, of Muslims. Uh, now, these are unwarranted conclusions because for each one of these facts, there, is a, there are very powerful counterarguments for why they don't license racism and sexism and anarcho-capitalism and so on. <laughs> the fact that men and women aren't identical uh, does not, has no implications for whether we should discriminate against women for a number of reasons. One of them is for any traits in which the sexes differ, the two distributions have enormous amounts of overlap so that you can't uh, draw a reliable conclusion about any individual from group averages. Uh, number two, the uh, principle of uh, opposition to racism and sexism is not a uh, factual claim that the sexes and races are indistinguishable in every uh, aspect. It's a political and moral commitment to treat people as individuals as opposed to prejudging them by the statistics of, of their group. Third, we know that some of the statistical generalizations about races and sexes change over time. So what is true now may not necessarily be true in uh, 10 or 20 years. So these are all reasons why you can believe that the sexes are different and be a uh, very strong feminist. Uh, why you can believe that differences uh, between the, uh, the, the uh, races exist and be very strongly opposed to any form of racism. In the case of, say, rates of violent crime, it used to be, uh, go back uh, 100 years, um, the rate of uh, violent crime among Irish Americans was far uh, higher than among other ethnic groups. That obviously changed. There's no reason that that can't change in the case of, of uh, current racial differences. Uh, in the case of terrorism, the majority of domestic terrorism is committed by right-wing extremist groups, not by uh, Islamic groups within, within this country. And of course, through much of its history, Islam was far more uh, enlightened than Christendom. There was no uh, equivalent of the Inquisition. There was no equivalent of the wars of religion uh, in, in the uh, classical history of, of uh, Islam. And finally, in the case of uh, the fact that capitalist, capitalism is really a better system than, uh, than Marxism, every successful capitalist society has regulation, um, has a social safety net, and in fact, some of the countries with the strongest social safety nets uh, are also the countries that are most friendly, that are most market friendly, that have the greatest degree of economic freedom. So these are all reasons why you can believe all of these and not necessarily drift toward uh, extremist positions. In fact, why you can be a progressive, a centrist, a liberal, even a leftist and believe all of these because you're exposed not only to the facts, but how to put them in context. Now, let's say that you have never even heard anyone mention these facts. The first time you hear them, you're apt to say, number one, the truth has been uh, withheld from me by universities, by mainstream media. Uh, number, uh, and moreover, you will be vindicated when people who voice these truths are suppressed, shouted down, uh, assaulted, all the more reason to believe that the that, that the left, that the mainstream media, that universities can't handle the truth. Uh, so they get vindicated over and over again. But worst of all, you're never exposed to the ways of putting these facts into context so that they don't lead to racism and sexism and, uh, and uh, extreme forms of uh, anarcho-libertarianism. So the uh, politically correct left is doing itself an enormous disservice when it renders certain topics undiscussable, especially when the, uh, the facts are clearly behind them, because they leave people defenseless the first time they hear them uh, against the most uh, extreme and uh, indefensible 
conclusions possible. If they were uh, exposed, then the rationale for putting them into uh, proper political and moral context could also be uh, articulated, and I don't think uh, you would have uh, quite the extreme backlash. So how you could believe that Pinker's sympathies lie with the alt-right are beyond me after listening to that. His message is quite the opposite, that by the left suppressing truths like different ethnic groups commit violent crimes at different rates, it encourages people to draw erroneous conclusions from those truths. Now, maybe you can disagree with Pinker's statement that capitalist societies are better than communist societies is a radical statement on university campuses. I doubt that it is at the Chicago Business School, but that's a minor quibble. Some of the reactions to Pinker's words are evidence that certain sections of the left just cannot come to terms with the fact that to some extent the alt-right and the election of Donald Trump is a reaction against the left's authoritarian political correctness. Now, just a further word on those people I cited in the beginning. You may accuse me of cherry-picking their statements, but I urge you to go and look at the tweet threads. Hundreds of people are piling on and agreeing. And there are also some that disagree. And this is what often happens. And that's not particularly surprising from regressive leftists. Now, I'm not going to go over the dishonesty of PZ Myers. Check out Thunderfoot's channel if you want to know more about that. But this Sasha Sane seems to have a propensity for deliberately misrepresenting people out of context. He's done this before with respect to Sam Harris. He clipped one minute of an almost two-hour podcast with Majid Nawaz completely out of context and then claimed that Majid Nawaz nodded along with Sam Harris's genocide rhetoric on Muslims, which of course Harris was not doing at all. He was playing devil's advocate, posing a question to Nawaz about a position on Muslim immigration that he, Harris, did not actually hold. I did a whole video on this particular misrepresentation that was picked up and repeated by Reza Aslan. Oh, and the professor from Hunter's College also has some interesting things to say, like... Part of what I've learned is that the white nuclear family is one of the most powerful forces supporting white supremacy. You're forming a white family and reproducing white children that you want the best for? How is that helping? Plus, not part of the problem. And she's got many more greatest hits just like that. But again, have a look behind the tweets of these liars and loon bags and you can find hundreds of people that agree with them. And as long as this kind of denialism exists on the left, they will give cover to the alt-right, just as Pinker accurately described.